I just got back from watching a movie that people online have been telling me is the funniest film of the year. And I have to tell you, they were right. Even upon my second viewing, Deadpool and Wolverine remains the funniest film of 2024. But that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm actually not even sure why I opened with that. The topic of this conversation is, am I racist? It's an age old question. One that I'm sure Matt Walsh will answer by the time this one hour and 45 minute PG-13 film is finished. Let's talk about it. From the studio behind What is a Woman and Lady Ballers comes Am I Racist? Yes, this is a film by The Daily Wire, a outlet that's incredibly right-leaning and isn't afraid to admit it. And I believe this is the first film I've seen from the company. Uh, I don't recall Lady Ballers or any of the others going to theaters. This one was actually playing at my screen, so I checked it out. Uh, here's the deal. I was on vacation for a week, and this movie came out during that time, much like last year or 20 years ago, whenever it was, The Sound of Freedom came out. I was also on a cruise when that happened. Apparently, I'm just always living the high life. I came back to a ridiculous amount of requests saying, Adam, don't be a coward. Review Sound of Freedom. Don't let the man put you down. Don't, don't cower away from this. And so I did, and I was, of course, like, destroyed in the comments because I thought the movie was incredibly lame. Now here we are again with Am I Racist? Countless requests telling me, Adam, you gotta review this. No one else is doing it. They're so afraid to review this film. I was scratching my head as to why. Granted, I didn't even know this movie existed until I returned two days ago. But it turns out it's made by Matt Walsh. Don't know really much about him at all, other than he's a political figure of sorts. He, he does a lot of stuff in the field, I guess, of DEI and making fun of this kind of agenda-pushing narrative that there's pervasive racism all across the country. Now, for you people outside of the States, this is a film I think that's mostly going to appeal to Americans and within that faction right-wing conservative Americans. So I apologize if this review does nothing for you. It honestly doesn't do much for me either because I don't care too much about this stuff. And also, the comments were saying, leave your bias at home, Adam. Go into this movie fresh with your own opinions. Well, that's what I did because I didn't know much about the movie going in. Now, I know what The Daily Wire is, and I had an idea of what this film was going to be because people were saying it was funny. It's kind of like Borat I was hearing. And I don't really care for Borat that much, which also didn't really help me going into this. Now, I don't need to uh, beat around the dick any further. Do I think that this movie, Am I Racist, is really funny and great and wonderful and you should rush out and see it? No. Did I laugh? Yeah, a couple times. I chuckled. Do I think it's a terrible film? No. Uh, I just don't think it's particularly anything worth watching. Now, obviously, there's a large base of people that loves the Shapiro types and, and Matt Walsh and whatnot. They're probably going to love this movie, so they don't really need to hear from me other than to see, oh, what does this random YouTube critic think about our movie? And it really is catered to that audience. It would be the equivalent of watching an hour and 45 minute film of Jimmy Fallon walking around owning Trump supporters, owning Fox News, and asking if they think Trump is a grifter, and then showing up the Trump Bible and his NFT collection and Trump shoes and merchandise that's made in a different country. Like, th there's, there's so many ways you can go about this. And so for that, I would say, hey, if you're planning on voting for Kamala Harris, yeah, that's the movie for you. But if you're planning on voting for Donald Trump, this is your movie. If you're me, you just want to watch a film and get some entertainment out of it and maybe get challenged along the way. So let's really dive into it. Am I racist? Matt Walsh is the star here. He's the vehicle driving this film. He's going around to different places, talking with people on the streets and in these interview forums and in these lecture halls. And he's going to these private conversations, yet the camera crew is always there, and everything is always very high-res, crisp visuals. No faces are blurred at all, ever. No voices are changed, ever. I found it odd that the whole movie looked good. <laughs> like, not great. It just all had the same visual style to it. That's weird to me, because if you watch something like Jackass or Borat, they will blur out faces because they didn't get permission to use them. Or they will hide voices, or there will be some really bad camera angles because they just couldn't get in there. But in this film, everything is framed up incredibly well. All faces are on display. Nothing seems to be really changed, although I did hear some pretty bad dubbing over by Matt Walsh during a couple scenes. I, 
it, it didn't have an authenticity to it, I guess is what I'm getting at. There was a disconnect. Now, it's possible the whole thing was factual and true and these interviews really happened how they did. I'm not saying they didn't. What I'm getting at is the production was almost too good. When you're trying to sell me on a product that's supposed to be realistic, having these really tightly framed cameras and these soft focus shots and these wide angle shots, it's coming off as a production. Before I get too far into it, let's just cover the basic plot of Am I Racist? It is a Borat type film where Matt Walsh is going to these different places and he's talking to people that are clearly grifting off of the narrative that America is inherently racist. And the idea that Matt Walsh is pushing is there is almost no racism that isn't manufactured. Like he's saying that there's just a tiny percentage of people out there that truly in their bones don't like other people because of the color of their skin or where they were brought up. And it's really the corporate machine and the left and the Democrats that are pushing this narrative. And no, it is not this, oh, it's no left or right thing here. It absolutely is. You don't see any footage of Trump saying anything bad. You do see plenty of clips of Nancy Pelosi, Kamala Harris, the ladies from The View. Like it's all these left wing folks. So even though I am told to go into this movie without a bias, the film has a very big one. It certainly has an angle that it's driving to. It also doesn't challenge the viewer or itself at all. Matt Walsh takes a very lazy approach to the commentary here. It's very surface level stuff. I think Johnny Knoxville puts more effort into his simple pranks than Walsh ever does. For instance, You'll see Johnny Knoxville get in a full body suit, looking like an old grandpa, he's wrinkled. He's unrecognizable when he goes to these places. By contrast, Walsh throws on a bad toupee and a pair of glasses, like he's Clark Kent from Superman. Like, dude, this isn't tricking anyone that would know who you are. You're, you're just Matt Walsh with glasses and a bad hairdo. Now, that's not to say this movie doesn't make any points, because it certainly does. There's no doubt that the media always overhypes and overplays things that happen in the world. Hell, anytime there's a hurricane, even remotely close to my area, the news acts like it's Armageddon. It's gonna be the fall of man coming my way. That we should prep for two weeks worth of provisions. The stores will be completely ransacked. You won't find water anywhere around you. It's just, it's madness. And so yes, the whole racist thing, the DEI thing, the woke stuff, the message, the agenda, all that stuff, there is a degree of it for sure. There are people that are peddling whatever they want to peddle on both sides. This is an all encompassing thing. You have folks on Facebook selling essential oils. You have folks over here selling different shakes that'll make you jacked in a week. You have testosterone pushing folks. Like there is an angle everywhere. So while Matt Walsh does make a point that, oh yeah, look at this lady is selling a seminar about how to be less racist and she's charging $15,000 a seat. Yeah, of course that's ridiculous and that's bullshit and this woman is completely grifting. That doesn't mean though that there isn't nuance to the conversation. But in this film, nuance is out the window and instead is replaced by some South Park-esque standing spiel in the final moments where Walsh just says, why can't we all just get along and love each other and treat our neighbor like we treat ourselves, no matter what color his skin is? That's great, that's, that's wonderful. The movie doesn't push any further than that, doesn't provide any real solution, doesn't uh, look at things from a different vantage point. It's very much focused on one lane and it just sticks to it the entire time. I also found the movie to be really dated. He talks about things that happened like 10 years ago. He dresses up in skinny jeans with a man bun. It just feels like you could have done the same exact joke 10 years ago and it would have hit a little harder. As for the comedic elements of this film, I will say Walsh can be pretty witty at times. He's, he's good at thinking on his feet, doing kind of slow nuanced reactions, saying some good quippy lines that might go over the person's head or he just makes them uncomfortable to a point where they might ask him to leave the room. There was some funny stuff there, especially when he talks to a woman about how his daughter wants to trick or treat as Moana and how it's considered Moana face. I can't remember the exact term he uses. Uh, that stuff was kind of funny, but humor is subjective. And I was at a full theater. It was a small theater, but it was pretty full. And a guy a couple rows back was laughing his ass off. He was just loving every minute of this film like he was watching Dumb and Dumber, Tommy Boy. I thought it was wild how much he laughed at the most basic of things, like he's never seen a comedy before in his life. This was the first time he's ever heard a joke. 
He also brought his son, who looked to be about 12. There was actually quite a few young, impressionable kids at this theater, which I also thought was very strange, but to each their own, right? Uh, this is also from the same group of people that gets annoyed when Disney puts messages in their film, yet they're gonna take their kids to a movie that's just chock full from front to back of messaging. <laughs> I don't know. There's hypocrisy all over the place. I think my biggest problem with the movie is it's just not that funny. There are parts that are humorous. There are setups that are there, but it takes a long time to get to any jokes. Also, it's not extreme in the slightest as far as the humor goes. Again, it's PG-13. This is not Borat. This is not Jackass. This isn't doing anything like Bowling for Combine where it is asking questions and there's some research put in and Michael Moore is really deep diving. It's just surface level observations you can find all over the internet. And as for the humor, you can watch a 10 minute video of someone going to a college campus and owning some of the impressionable kids over there. Or you can do the same thing on the other side and watch a collection of stupid shit Trump supporters say going into one of his events. I don't know, a movie like this, you're kind of screaming into a tunnel. People have already decided whether they're gonna see it or not. I don't think I'm gonna like sway anyone to not go out and watch it or rush out and see it based on what I've said. But there are only 10 critic reviews on this movie currently on Rotten Tomatoes. So sure, why not throw it out there? I don't shy away from watching anything. I think that's kind of pathetic that a, a movie critic would. Now I understand why people aren't reviewing this because to them it looks like propaganda. And I'm just gonna throw this at you. If you love this movie and you don't think it's propagandist in any way and you think I'm being dishonest or disingenuous, if a movie came out that was on the other side talking about how much the right uses religion to stoke fear or illegal aliens coming across the border to stoke fear, I think you probably would call it propaganda too and you wouldn't like the movie. But there's comedy to be made all over the place. I just wish this one was funnier. Let me know your thoughts on this film. Did you see it? Did you laugh your ass off from beginning to end? Or are you like me and you thought, eh, yeah, okay. There's, there's a couple, couple jokes here and there and it's not really saying much that I didn't know already. Let me know in the comments below. Please think about subscribing if you haven't. I post a lot of movie reviews, commentary, live streams, rants every single week. Would love to have you stick around. If you love what I'm doing and you fear for my life after this review, maybe think about joining Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies where you can become a member, help support this one-man band, and then I can continue to watch films by The Daily Wire that go to theaters. How exciting would that be? All right, hopefully I see you next time. Take care.